Good morning, YBB, and welcome to another wonderful Sunday morning. I am bringing you another Let the Psalms Speak Sunday. Um, and by me bringing it, I mean I'm hosting with my awesome friends. So I just want to introduce you to these amazing people who I am somewhat biased about. They are all on our youth team and sewing into young people regularly. Um, so I am aware that I'm biased, but they are also very awesome. So I just want you to get to know them a little bit as well. Beck, tell us about where you've been spending lockdown. So I'm actually really lucky to be living with my best friend. <laughs> so we study together, we hang out and play games. So it's real, you know, a blessing. <laughs> um, and just to help people get to know you guys a little bit better, what is your favourite meal or baked good to cook at home? Beck is frozen. Cool. Sorry, frozen. <laughs> Good, go. <laughs> My favourite meal to cook would be homemade spaghetti. It's just such a classic. <laughs> such a classic. Perfect. And up in the top corner of my screen, we have Christopher. Tell us about how you're spending lockdown. Uh, also with my best friend of 50 oh. years. <laughs> and we're, we're, just, uh, we're just quite comfortable and happy spending our time together and in our garden and with each other. Lovely. And so people can understand a bit more about you, Chris, what's your favourite thing to cook? Uh, steak and onion pie. Oh, you haven't cooked that for me. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Next time, when lockdown's over. Uh, and in my bottom corner down there, we have Sienna. How are you, Sienna? I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about where you're spending lockdown. So I'm spending lockdown with my family, um, which is really lovely. And I've just moved into, just before COVID hit, I moved into a new room, which has this lovely view behind me. Um, yeah. Um, and my favorite thing to cook or bake is probably my Christmas tradition, white chocolate and mango ripple cheesecake. Awesome. So I haven't had that either. We're going to have to start placing some orders for our next <laughs> youth gathering so I can taste some of these things. Um, mine, I feel like I have to participate. Mine is something boring like hummingbird cake. Um, but that's just because it's really hard to mess up. So <laughs> um, I'm hopefully you guys at home go know a little bit more about these guys now. And what we're going to do is just give everyone an opportunity to talk about a psalm that has impacted them either recently or, you know, something maybe that they've been traveling with for a long time. Um, and part of our, our weekly thing of let the psalm speak is really just to hear from other people about how God is talking to people through the psalms. Um, so we might start off with Beck. Tell us about what you've been reading. So originally reading through a couple of the psalms to try and figure out what I was going to talk about today. Um, Psalm 8 really resonated with me um, with the putting things into perspective, which is something I really like to do. Um, sometimes you just got to take a break and step back and pop things into perspective. Mm -hmm. And I found that this verse really structured it really well in how God may view us um, and how we can view ourselves differently. Mm -hmm. um, I think that sometimes it's easy to get caught in the bigger picture. So looking at God's creation as the moon and the stars, as Psalms 8 verse 3 says. Um, I find myself doing that often. I'll be fixating on the things around me. So maybe sitting in nature, look, it's beautiful. But also I'll get fixated on work, uni, looking at things like my social life, and I get distracted. But what is the true perspective? That's when we need to take a step back. Um, so True. Psalm 8, verse 4, what are we mere mortals that you would, sh that, sorry, that you should think about them, human beings, that you should care for them? This directly shows what God thinks of us, you know, mm -hmm. he puts us first before everything else, before the beautiful, glorious mountains that you'll see outside, anything like that. God actually put us first. Um, Psalms 8, verse 6 to 9. You gave them charge of everything, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds, 
all the animals of the wind, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean's currents. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic your name fills the earth. I think that's really awesome that God sees us that way. He does put us first. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important that I could conclude this in many different ways, but what I would like to look at it in the perspective of is, you know, we can take responsibility for our land and adjusting our economic approaches to things maybe, or you can take on Jesus's call to being disciples of the word. Um, or really focusing in on relationship with one another, which I think is a big thing at the moment. Um, sending a message to a friend, just giving a call, checking in, things like that are really important. Um, another way I like to put things into perspective is through an analogy. So if you think of an artwork, there are many different sections and you can look up and look at an artwork up close. You can appreciate the nice brush stroke, the um, vibrant colors, but to really figure out what the picture is actually about, what the whole picture looks like, you still have to step back. And I think that's really what this verse can help us do. So we can look at the different elements of our world, the moon, the stars. And I think that's something I get caught up in of what God's creation really is. But I think when you take a step back, you can look and just see each other. That's really what God wanted us to focus on and relationship with each other too. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, Beck. That's great. Chris, it looked like you were moving around taking some notes up there. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I really liked the fact that uh, in Beck's introduction, she talked about how we can easily live in our lives, forget that that's not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, our job's not the most important thing, not even where we live is the most important thing. The most important thing, which she emphasised at the end, is our relationship with each other. Mm. And I, I think that, uh, especially under this, this COVID thing, I've found that I'm making a lot of phone calls that, to people that I probably wouldn't phone. Yeah. Uh, and I've realised the more, when we're alone, how much we need each other. So I, I really got encouraged from what Beck was saying that, that, that this is the most important thing is because Jesus said that, love one another as yeah. I have loved you. And I think that's sadly lacking in, in society in general pre-COVID. Mm. No, so true. Um, so Chris, what have you been doing? <laughs> well, mine is a psalm that's been with me for years. It's Psalm 139. Uh, I would like to read this bit from the message. It's Psalm 139, so 12, to, 12 to 15. Um, right, so it says, I'll just pull around so I'm face on. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside and then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I would even lived one day and to me the, the thing that came to me i guess because when i was young i was trying to prove to be somebody bitter better more famous more popular and then when i came to jesus jesus showed me how special i am and how special every other human being on earth is the human being is truly a miraculous creation because after all when god made creation he, he did all that the animals and the skies and the planets and the stars and everything he said oh well that's good <laughs> then he made man and woman and said this is very good this is made in my image after my likeness and i think i i, I think it took me quite a while to start to get my head around the fact 
that to God, I am the best thing he could ever make. And I don't think as humans, we live like that. And then kind of the thing like science has discovered, like DNA and fingerprints and eye prints and stuff like that. And the more they find, the more amazing it shows you the human being is. Yeah. We are actually truly amazing. It doesn't matter who we are or even how we try to alter ourselves, like through plastic surgery or anything, that's not going to change the person that God made. Mm -hmm. and, and the world today says you've got to look good. But God says, I know you, your innermost being. The real person is the one God created. Outward appearance is not important to God. The inner person is. Yeah. Do you love? Do you forgive? Do you care? These are the things that matter to God. This is the person he's created you to be. A loving, caring, absolutely amazing, miraculous, best thing he could ever create. And finally, my, my challenge would be to people is this is a scary bit. God, investigate my life. Give me a clear picture of myself, faults and all. Then guide me along your road. Wow, Chris, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Um, I really resonated with the idea that that we are wonderful. I think it's really easy when we're so distant and we're not seeing the people that we love to have social media and the digital influence be such a strong feature in how we view ourselves depending on our situation. And I think although the season makes it easier for us to do that, um, it presents us with a challenge and to to remind ourselves of where how god made each of us individually yeah. and each of our strengths and each of our, our parts that are just like him and that he designed specifically for us to have um, so thank you for sharing um so mine is a little bit um I'll give you some context for mine. So a number of years ago, I got a vision um, from the Lord and kind of a story um, about how I was hiking up a mountain, which is why I love hiking so much, even though I don't get to do it as much now. Um, and he spoke to me about, um, about I prepared you. Um, so I have given you everything. You have everything that you need with you. I haven't left you barefoot. I haven't left you in thongs. You have hiking boots to protect your feet. And throughout my life, I've had my feet spoken over as my foundation and my, my grounding, um, which I think can be said for a lot of us. And so I had this vision he, and he talked to me about that if you keep looking at the view, you're going to stumble because you're not looking down at where you're going. But if you keep looking down at where you're going, you're not gonna see where you've come from. So it's this, he's, he taught me this balance between looking at where you're going and keeping head down, focus, work at it, but then taking the time to look back at where you've come to remind yourself of how far it, it actually has been. Um, so he reminded me of this, this psalm, which I didn't get at that period, but relates to it. And it's, it's Psalm 121. And it says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. So this is, this just kind of hit my heart. And I was immediately taken back to that moment where he first spoke to me about the mountains. Um, and I think during this time, it's really easy to forget the times when God met us. Um, to, if you're not feeling like he's with you at this moment, to very easily forget how much you've been to, through together, like how much he has traveled with you and that he's been there each step of the way, even though he hasn't felt like it. Um, so I think what I would take away from this is to write down 
document the times where he met you um, to remind yourself of that although you can't see him and you can't necessarily feel him at the moment he's with you he planned like he knew that this would happen and he has prepared you for this he has given you everything that you need and he is reminding you of a season where he met you before so good <laughs> Really beautiful, Sienna. I loved um, how you drew on your own personal connections with God and brought it, and it directly related with that psalm. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was really awesome to see how God communicates with you as well through that, um, clearly through scripture and the vision, which is really beautiful. But I just like the idea of looking forward, walking by faith um, and not by sight, but really trusting in what God's given you. I think that was really beautiful. Yeah. So. Thanks, ben. <laughs> Sorry, cut you off. <laughs> um, one of my favourite things about these little psalm things is, and I don't know if people realise at home, no one knows what um, psalm the other person's bringing, at least when I'm hosting. I don't tell anyone because I often don't know. We, we let them turn up and just bring what God's put on their heart. And every time we do this, there's like a theme. And I don't know if you guys notice, but throughout all of your things, there's just this theme of perspective. Um, and Psalm 121 is actually, it's in my top three. Uh, <laughs> and the reason I always like that one is because the way it starts, you know, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? When I first heard this, I thought it was talking about oh, looking up to beautiful things, but it was actually the places where um, pagan gods would have their temples. They would build um, them as high to the heavens as they could. So when they're looking at those particular things, they're getting a perspective, not of beauty and the beautiful things that you've talked about, Beck. It was, um, it was a contradiction to what they knew, looking up high. And so hearing you guys all share about having a correct perspective of, of creation and our role in it, having a correct perspective of who God created us to be and perspective of how he meets us and where he is in our journey, um, it's just so interesting to me the way these things weave together <laughs> and stay um, as as interlinked as they are. Sorry, my brother's interrupting. They know what we're doing. What are they thinking? Anywho, <laughs> so you guys have, have shared a little bit about how we can apply this in our own lives um, and a takeaway. So what we'll be doing now is putting up their takeaway, their message momentum, which we've been having at the end of each week. So you guys can take some time and reflect on what our awesome friends have shared and go a little bit deeper with God around what he's challenging you in this week in a positive way. It's not a fight, it's an invitation. <laughs> um, and hopefully challenging a few of your perspectives, either on yourself or on him and his role. So thank you guys. <laughs> Wasn't too painful, was it? No, that was good. That was okay. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Joe. No, all good. All right. And we'll see you guys next Sunday. Oh, Bye. Yes. Bye.